All right, so this time, uh, instead of the, the signs of the factors being the same and they have to add up to the middle term, uh, you'll, notice, you'll notice here the signs are going to be different. So I'll uh, show you what to look for. Let me change colors here. All right. So we got x squared minus 4x minus 12. Uh, the leading term is 1, so we're good there, so we can treat it just like the others. I uh, will factor it into two binomials. Still has to be x and x, but you see, because the 12 term is negative, well, the only way you can multiply two numbers to get a negative is if one of them is positive and the other is negative. And which number you put where actually does matter this time, all right? So we are going to list off the factors of 12 or negative 12, but instead of looking for the numbers that add up to, to negative 4, we're looking for numbers that subtract to give us negative 4, all right? So 1 and 12 don't do it. Uh, we've got 2 and 6. That's the one that does it. 6 minus 2 is 4. And I'll go ahead and list out the other one here, 3 and 4, but it won't be that one. All right, 2 and 6 will give us a difference of 4. Uh, the way you determine which number goes where is you look at the sign of the middle term here. Because the sign of the middle term is negative, that means the bigger of your two numbers, which is 6, has to be negative. All right? So because the middle term is negative, the sign of the bigger number over here has to be negative. So the x minus part has to be with a 6, and the positive part has to be with a 2. All right? So the fact that we had a negative number here told us that we have to have different signs, so one positive, one negative. Then we listed out the factors and looked for the one that had a difference of 4. All right? Moving on, next example. All right, 3x squared, 6x minus 45. Uh, the leading coefficient is not a 1, so I do want to start by seeing if I can factor out a greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor is 3, all right? So we're going to pull out a 3. 3 times x squared gives us 3x squared. 3 times 2 gives us the 6x. And 3 times something gives us 45. That would be a 15. So minus 15. All right. Start off the same way. We're going to have two factors. Bring down your three. You don't want to forget that. And we still have an x and an x. All right. Because the constant term is a negative, one will be positive, one will be negative. All right. That's the only, two, that's the only way that you can multiply to get a negative number is if one factor is positive, one is negative. All right, we'll list out the factors of 15, which are not that bad. 1 and 15, 3 and 5. And we're looking for two numbers whose difference, who subtract to give us 2. Well, that's got to be the 3 and the 5. All right. Uh, because the 2, because the 2 has a positive sign, that means the bigger of our two numbers over here has to be positive. So the 5 is going to be positive. And the other, known, the other one's going to be negative. All right. Uh, that's it for this one. Uh, if you wanted to check your answer, you could multiply it out. Uh, let's see, you'd have to multiply x plus 5 times x minus 3. And then multiply 3 times whatever that answer was. All right. That's how you could check your answer.